Hello everybody, bonjour tout le monde, welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. I am your host Jimmy Smith. This is a wine educational channel really here to help you enjoy wine even more. We specifically aim a lot of our videos and presentations towards those of you studying the world of wine. And here we have a part of our Northern Rhone series for the WSET Level 4 Diploma. If you are getting knee deep into the diploma, this is very useful for you. So here we are. The Rhone Valley is actually split into three major sections, the overview, the north, and the south. So this is the northern section. This is part two of eight. This part, along with the previous part, is available as free content on the world of YouTube. But parts three to eight are only available on my e-learning portal. That's www.winewithjimmy.com. Um, lots of exclusive stuff there, loads more videos and tools to help you with your studies. If anybody has any comments or questions, theories or anything at all, please do pop it in the comment section of this video on the world of YouTube. And there's two things you can do whilst doing that. There is also the like button, please click, and the subscribe button to make sure you get our weekly updates from the world of Wine with Jimmy. So social media, you'll also find at the bottom of every slide, if you are that way inclined, all the handles are down there. The portal, by the way, is also ad free. So here on YouTube, you'll find that we do have advertisements, but the portal is ad free if that bothers you. So we are looking at our first Cru wine of the Northern Rhone. We are looking at our first AOC, and that is Cote Rôti Slope Roasted, therefore the Roasted Slope. Very famous place. It's a very small AOC, as many are in the Northern Rhone, and it's the most northerly of the Northern Rhone, and it produces only red wines. So we're just focusing on Syrah, but also some other white variety as well. Viognier is allowed here. 2,000 years ago, Roman writers Martial and uh, Pliny the Elder, along with the Greek biographer Plutarch, lauded the wines of Cote Rôti, calling them the wines of Vienne, which is a nearby city. And the first written documentation mentioning Ampuy and Cote Rôti dates back to the 6th century. So we have thousands of years of history behind this very famous place. And I remember on the previous presentations, I've talked about the influence of the Romans on this area. So we are going to have a little bit of a look at exactly where we find Cote Rôti. Uh, so let's uh, have a look at this. So there you are. There's your um, map of the Northern Rhone, as you can see. Uh, so stretching from Vienne to Valence, and that's Cote Rôti down to saint Pere. And of course, we're identifying this most northerly part. And we're going to have a quick look at a Google Earth video, about two, three minutes long, to give you a real idea and feel of the area. These are quite wonderful things. So let's have a look at this. Here we go. So um, it's going to have an overview of the Rhone Valley. We'll then focus on the north, where it uh, identifies all the AOCs. But we're, of course, going all the way to the north for Cote Roti. So let's have a look at this wonderful video. There is the Rhone River in blue. There is the Rhone region for wine in red, including the southern section. But then that small and very important northern section, which we'll focus on in much greater detail. So there's the Rhone Valley, of course, a very sizable AOC region, second only to Bordeaux. So there we go, overview of it. Let's have a little bit of a closer look at the North Rhone, of course, north of Montmélimar, north of Valence, and south of Vienne. Here we go. So there you are. So you'll notice that it's really all around the Rhone River. 
split into a number of crew AOCs. To the west, the left-hand side, is the Massi Central, which is the big natural protectional barrier. We go right to this northerly AOC, and here we are in blue. This is Cote Roti. Uh, so the city above this is Vienne, uh, and we've got a couple of cities included within Cote Roti as well. But there is the Cote Roti land. Sorry, there's Vienne just here. We have Ampuy. This is actually Lyon in the distance, the city of Lyon, very close by. So let's focus on its easterly end, the city of Vienne, often called the most northerly point of the northern Rhone. And then when you come to the heart of uh, the Côte Roti, down on the river is the city of Ampuy, which has a gorgeous castle, Chateau d'Ampuy, where the wines are made by um, the Gigal family. Some famous sites here so you can get an idea of the aspect and the very steep slopes, the topography. Côte Rosier, you'll see just here, exceptionally steep, about 45 degrees just there facing southeast. Then we'll come to the real famous ones, things like Côte Brune, uh, which is a south facing, and also Côte Blonde as well. Uh, there you are. So very steep. These are about sort of 50 degree terraced uh, and of the famous geology which I'll go through in this presentation things like metamorphic schist rock uh, based on granite and there's the Cote Blonde as well so you'll often see labels with the Cote Blonde or Cote Brun or the La Las they call them as well the specific um, uh, climates within these which are called the La Las so that is your Cote Roti site giving you an idea a feel for the area. So you see most of it is sort of south or southeast facing on very, very steep terraced sites. So let's go through the presentation and I'll keep linking back to that video so you have an idea of what is going on. So here we are first up, our first look here about the steep slopes which we just witnessed. So these vineyards are on these steep slopes, often but not always terraced and they face mainly south and southeast, making for very high sunlight interception and sheltered from the winds that approach from the north, of course, funneling down into the Mistral wind. Now, Cote Roti wines made from the vines planted on this right bank of the Rhone River really do own their character to the steep slopes uh, which can go in some places greater than 60 degree in terms of its angle. The high levels of sunlight, the high levels of heat, and the rapid drainage from the very poor stony soils results in very, very ripe concentrated fruit. And there is a part of the Cote Blonde. You'll see Chaputier sign in the background, Gigal in the background. And in the foreground, more importantly, my trusty steed, Jeff, my Volkswagen campervan from 1971, so over 50 years old now, uh, and my little guide around many European wine regions, uh, my, uh, my, my orange camper. So yes, there's your steep slopes. Now, the geology of this landscape. So. As we know, the slopes of Cote Roti are extremely steep, reaching those gradients above 60 degrees. And almost all of the vineyards in Cote Roti are based for the most part on metamorphic rock, rock that is produced by pressure in the earth. Um, now, there are parent types associated to metamorphic, and the parent type here is granitic because of the massive central. So you have a lot of um, bedrock, which is granite, and then a lot of top rock, which is your, uh, your metamorphic, so subsoils and topsoils, which are based on metamorphic. So the varying pressure and temperatures and hotter in the south of the Appalachian have really created three distinct terroirs. You have kind of like a, a mica schist in the north, you have gneiss nice in the south, and you have uh, a, a migmatite in the uh, extreme southeast, which is um, another metamorphic rock. Uh, so you'll find a lot of 
the rocks here because they are quite uh, you'll see the, the the pictures of them here you've got your sort of darker schists and your pink granites as well a lot of these are angular rocks they are fractured quite uh, well under the pressure in the earth so you've get this wonderful fracturing rock which enables great root systems to develop in this area and those root systems can find water and other nutrients that they need but they need time to develop uh, so that's your geology of the landscape. Now, we would say that uh, we have a moderate continental climate in, uh, in, in the Northern Rhone, and the steepness of the slopes makes it very much necessary to do a lot of the work by hand. And erosion is a constant problem. Many vines are on terraces, as we mentioned, not exclusively, but many of them are. And those terraces, remember, originally created by the Romans, they will need constant care and attention, and they'll have to be quite frequently repaired. The unterraced vineyards require annual repositioning of stones that will wash to the bottom of the hill with the yearly rains. And each fall after harvest, the vignerons strap buckets to their backs and cart their vineyard topsoil back up the slope. That is intensive. Potentially, we call that heroic. It's quite crazy. So um, otherwise here as well, individual vines are normally singly or doubly trained guillo. And they are tied commonly to one stake or to a couple of stakes, which look a little bit like a TP structure, which is something called an echelas, as you see written here on the slide. And that TP structure, of course, providing good support for the vine, specifically against things like the mistral wind. Now, in this area, um, there was a lack of commercial interest in this AOC and surrounding AOCs due to the very hard work that needs to go into the vineyard. And bearing in mind, France was very much a country affected by the political issues across Western Europe during a lot of the late 19th century and early 20th century. So really, these areas became quite disparate because they were difficult to tend to. A lot of the uh, viticulture switched to valley floors where it was easier to manage and with larger yields. Um, and in fact, by the 1960s, 1970s, the appellation of Cote-Routi had actually um, shrunk to around 60 or 70 hectares. So it was very, very small. But there were some really wonderful pioneers and uh, real ambassadors for the AOC and the revival really was put into place by Etienne Guigal in the picture on the left and his son Marcel uh, and their single vineyard Cote Rutis, you know, specifically initially La Mouline and La Ladon, which are called the Lalas. They were, of course, and still are today amongst the most prized Cote Rutis you can get your hands on. Now, the, the wines like this were given exceptionally high scores by Robert Parker. Uh, Robert Parker Jr. was very familiar with Gigao since the first half of the 1980s and after a quarter of a century wrote that he does not know a man more fanatically devoted to the idea of quality than Marcel Gigal. And Gigal's wines received a perfect score of 100 points from Robert Parker and you know, subplot here if you hate the um, system of scoring wines in this way, then I'm sorry, <laughs> it's a little bit of history. I'm not terribly fond of it. But 33 times Parker rated Gigal wines 100 points. And apparently it's a, a feat that no other winemaker has ever approached. Cote Roti today has around 250 hectares. So since the 60s and 70s, it's near enough quadrupled. And the wines are typically very good to outstanding and are normally premium and super premium priced. So let's go into the blend. All the wines are red, red only, and it's made from Syrah, a minimum 80% and a maximum 20% Viognier. Though in practice, Viognier 
is not used that, that much. And if it is, it's very small. It's normally sort of five to eight percent maximum. But the laws do allow for 20 percent. The preferred rootstock here. So most of the cerevines are most commonly propagated by mass selection with the rootstock 3309 being preferred by most growers. Why? Well, it's regarded as being relatively productive, uh, but also producing grapes of really good colour, which is important for a syra, of course. And your vine planting density tends to be around 10,000 vines per hectare, creating a lot of competition between the vines, reducing the yields and producing therefore more concentrated characteristics in the grapes. And the maximum allowed yield is quite low. It's around 40 hectoliters per hectare, which also pushes the wines towards more concentration. Now, when both grapes are used in a Cote Ruti, they must be co-fermented. So they are thrown in a vat together like you see just here. And when Viognier is added, it does tend to add more floral and fruity aromas. However, there can be a possibility of a bit of colour problem through the use of Viognier. So it has to be a bit careful. Plus, you can actually diminish the acidity quite significantly by adding too much Viognier. So it really does have to be monitored quite well. A little bit about winemaking here as well, a bit more on winemaking. So winemaking really here emphasizes the aromatic potential of the wines. So there is decisions around utilizing whole bunches and stem inclusion. Uh, most do choose to de-stem and then cold soak the, uh, the fruit, but a percentage of stems may be utilized in the ferments. Um, and that's really to enhance a little bit more of the aromatic capability of the wine. So de-stem normally happens, but some stems may be utilized as inclusion. Cold soaking certainly for colors. And then some more general winemaking, warm fermentation temperatures are typical, so into the late 20 degrees Celsius, and that's for extraction. Natural yeasts are frequently used because a lot of the production here is more smaller, more boutique, or dominated by um, a few uh, major growers like Delas, Chaputier, or Gigal and they tend to go ahead with the natural yeast process uh, and also the, it, it, the perceived terroir that you you get from natural yeast is important too. Malolactic takes, um, uh, always takes uh, place in cask as well. Maturation is either in small oak barriques, which are 225 litres, which is pretty much on the model of the Gigal single vineyard site Cotrutis, or in larger wooden vessels, uh, which are called demi mui, which you'll see just here at five to six hundred litres usually. Uh, these are normally for those wanting less oak influence in their styles of quite elegant and aromatic coat rotis. And the style here. So stylistically, the wines are known for very pronounced and lifted aromatics, but they are typically softer and less full-bodied than their counterparts in the south of the Northern Rhone. So things like Cornas, or classically what it's pitched against, is Hermitage. You'll often find the colour is a little bit lighter, potentially with the use of Viognier, and you'll find the wines are a little bit more elegant. Some people say feminine, and they have that pronounced aromatic or lifted floral or perfume touch to them. Uh, so that's your style. Some famous labels. Uh, so, of course, Gigal. Now, this is Gigal and this is La La Donne. So Gigal, founded in 1946 in Empuy, it's an incredible producer making prestigious wines from wonderful vineyard sites. Uh, and it's run by Marcel and Bernadette Gigal today. And Philippe, their son, is the current winemaker of the estate. La Ladon is located on clay and limestone soils, 
rich in iron oxides, which is said to give a little bit of a savoury character to the wines. And it's 100% syrup on roughly around 35 year old vines. Very wonderful stuff indeed. Then you have Gigal's Le Turc as well on silica limestone soils with mica and schist. And these uh, are rich on iron oxides as well. The yields are quite low here. It's normally about 10 hectolitres per hectare lower than the law. Uh, and it's actually got a bit of Viognier in this cuvee um, or normally has some Viognier in La Turc. And then the final label here, but this, this is not ex exhaustive, by the way. There are many others too. Uh, this is Domaine René Rostang. Uh, producing their first vintage in 1971. Uh, very famous for Ampodium Cote Blonde and La La Don. That's the Cote Blonde label up on the screen. Uh, very famous, around seven hectares. And really, uh, the soil for Cote Blonde is poor. Its uh, mineral is kind of mica and silica. Uh, and uh, it's kind of on shaly schist uh, soils as well. It's a 95% syrah. 5% Viognier and is one that can develop for absolute decades. So there we are. Now, just a word that this follows the syllabus of the WSET, but with added elements, we add a little bit more flair into our presentations here at Wine with Jimmy. Now, if you love these presentations and you wish to learn more and you want to carry on with this series, you'll have to go and visit winewithjimmy.com. To, uh, to view videos uh, part three to eight. That's Contrio there down to St. Pere. It's only available on my, uh, my e-learning portal. So please do visit there. And the same again, if you have any comments, questions, or any niggling things you'd like to get in touch, you can comment on this video on YouTube. Please make sure you click like and subscribe or you can get in touch with the social media at the bottom of every slide. If you do find yourself in London, in the United Kingdom, then come and see me at one of my establishments. Come and see us for a class, a glass, or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now.